Good evening, and welcome to Harvest Fellowship at the Holiday Inn. Feels good to say that. This is wonderful. I think this is like my first time to see almost the entire congregation in one place. And we're so grateful that you're here this evening, especially those that are visiting with us or those that are joining us online. We're glad you're here. I'm going to invite my family to come forward uh, as I uh, give a couple of instructions regarding the candles that you have. We're going to hold off on these until the appropriate time uh, during Silent Light. We will let you know when that is, and it's basically a, a simple twist and a light. Uh, just so you know, we'll be lighting the, the Christ candle later on towards the end of the service to basically announce Christ's coming to us. So now we're going to relight the candles. So I'm going to ask this young man to pull, step forward. Have the lighter. And uh, we're going to start with relighting the candle of hope and expectation and anticipation of our Lord's coming. And after we light that, we're going to relight the candle of preparation and peace. And then we come to the pink candle, the candle of my wife's finger, uh, and the, the candle of joy. And then, as we did last Sunday, the candle of love. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, our hearts desire the warmth of your love. And our minds are searching for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ our Savior. And give us the strength to grow in love. That the dawn of his coming may find us rejoicing in his presence. And welcoming the light of his truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. Please join me in reading responsibly. God is in your midst. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will say, He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors. And I will save the lame, and gather the outcasts, and I will shame for their shame for a race, and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you, I will make you renowned and praised among all peoples of the earth, and I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord.
the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, that of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
please stand. has not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace of grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known.
reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross.
to us a child is born, the Savior of this broken world. Oh, hear the angel voices sing, come, let us adore him. Peace has come, for our King is with us. Holy God and holy man, he comes for all with open hands. He rules with love on David's throne.
this way. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of the Lord, Joseph, excuse me, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. There was a strange story that came out of the city of Philadelphia, a small section of the city, well actually rather large, but it was a small community uh, became concerned because there were decorations, uh, Halloween decorations and Christmas decorations slowly disappearing from people's houses, from their windows, from their front porches, from their lawns, just disappearing. And so the neighbors were so concerned, they began to talk about it on social media and Facebook. The mystery was eventually solved as one of the neighbors spotted a middle-aged woman carrying a four-foot lit Christmas tree from a neighbor's yard to back to her home. And here, this caper was exposed, and a 42-year-old woman named Gwen Curran was hoarding and hiding Halloween decorations and Easter decorations and Christmas decorations. And when the police uh, went into her house and discovered there were well over between two and 400 different decorations, that had been stolen from the neighbors. And as you can imagine, the people were happy that they got their decorations back, but a little bit disturbed about why this had happened. And the police said, a uh, policeman who was interviewed by the local newspaper said, this has to be one of the oddest uh, stories uh, that we had ever experienced and come they interviewed a couple of neighbors named Jim and, and Mary, and Jim said, she is a hoarder. But Mary spoke the most profound words when she said she stole the Christmas spirit. She stole our Christmas spirit. And I suspect in a room like this, or those that are watching online, that you're feeling that that is a very familiar experience for you. To some degree, this year, you feel like the pandemic, the coronavirus, has dampened your Christmas spirit. Practically, I would suspect it probably dampened and stole your entire 2020. And it leads us to beg the question, what is Christmas or Advent really about? Is it about decorations? Is it about the trees, the presents, uh, all of the lights, the, the shows, the pageants, the music? What is it really about? 
And as we read and hear, heard in the readings tonight, we see particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 1, quoting from the prophet Isaiah, the meaning of Christmas or Advent is one word. It's a name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's what Christmas or Advent is all about, God with us. That's what we've been focusing on uh, this evening. J.I. Packer, who is a Canadian-British theologian, just recently passed away a few years ago, said this, The supreme mystery with which the gospel confronts us lies not in the Good Friday message of the atonement, nor in the Easter message of resurrection, but in the Christmas message of incarnation. The really staggering Christian claim is that Jesus of Nazareth was God made man. The word was made flesh. God became man. The divine son became a Jew. The almighty appeared on earth as a helpless human baby, unable to do more than lie and stare and wriggle and make noises, needing to be fed and changed and taught to talk like any other child. The more you think about it, the more staggering it gets. Nothing in fiction is so fantastic as is this truth of the Incarnation. And so tonight, I want us to consider the staggering truth of this one word, Emmanuel, God with us. Two natures, God and man, can join together into one person, very God and very man. Let's take a look at his deity or his divine nature, the godness the claim of Jesus to be God, God in the flesh. We see very clearly in the narratives and the Gospels about the birth of Christ, the divine claim that Jesus was born, conceived by the Holy Spirit. God became God with us. And you see, this is a very radical claim, especially to what we'd say Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew's readers, because they're primarily a Jewish audience. And here they get news that God took on flesh. Now, they remember the prophet Isaiah's quote, which we read tonight, the virgin shall conceive and give birth. To them, they thought it was a human being coming as a deliverer from their Roman oppressors. But Isaiah, and clearly in the rest of the Gospels, it's not merely a man, but this is God, God in the flesh, who comes to dwell with us. We read and heard tonight the claims of Jesus in the Gospel of John, that he was there at creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and nothing was made without him. And then the Gospel of John would go on to say, in him, the fullness of God would be revealed in the flesh, in the flesh, from the Father, from grace full of grace and truth. And as we read in Colossians, for in him, Jesus, the whole fullness of deity in the body dwells. And then there is Jesus' own self-understanding, Jesus' own claims about how he will come and back, back and judge with the Father, with the Spirit. We'll see his unique claims 
as he says to the religious leaders of his day, before Abraham was, I am. Claiming that the I am in the story of Moses, there in the burning bush, God reveals himself as the I am. And now Jesus takes on that title as the I am revealed. So what does it mean that Jesus is God at Christmas? What does it mean? It means we come to a crossroads. Each and every one of us tonight come to a fork in the road. Will you believe that he is Lord? Will you believe he is the king that has come down from heaven? Or will you be someone who rejects him, hates him, and despises him? You see, a lot of people think that Jesus was a nice person, a great moral teacher, a good example. But Christmas doesn't let us get away with such notions. He is Lord. He is God in the flesh. Will you receive him? Will you rest upon him? Will you trust in him as your Lord and say, will you worship him? You see, every one of us here tonight worships something. Whether it's our appearance, whether it's our career, our family, our marriage, our kids, people's love and acceptance. Every one of us lives to worship something. And the call of Christmas is to worship Christ, the newborn king. There was a 20th century uh, German-born American actress, Marlene Dietrich. And Marlene Dietrich, she had a very strange habit. She would invite her friends, people like Judy Garland, old actresses, to come over to her house. And back in those days, there wasn't, you know, the internet and uh, DVDs, or even cassettes, vinyl albums. And on those vinyl albums, on both sides of the vinyl album, was a recording of just applause. And so she would go over and put on the record player and play the applause, and she would say, oh, that's Rio. Oh, and that's me in Chicago. In front of her friends listening to the applause. Marlene was living for the applause and the approval of others. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you're living for anything, if you're worshiping anything, then Christ the newborn king, everything else will leave you empty, unsatisfied, unfulfilled. Christ is revealed as king, God with us. Advent is God with us. Will you surrender? Will you worship him? The Holy One who has come down for Christmas. But that leads us to consider the humanity. We have the deity of Christ and we have the humanity of Christ. And what we've been talking about, God with us, Emmanuel, we have God who is with us. This is the uniqueness of Christianity that claims that God has come down in the flesh to rescue Jesus' name. He will save his people from their sins. An author, Christian author and pastor, Tim Keller, put it like this. Emmanuel means the ideal has become real. The absolute has become particular, and the invisible has become visible. The incarnation is the universe sundering, history altering, life transforming, paradigm shattering event in history. Think about that. the uniqueness, this God who is with us. 
Now, I know there's probably people in the room like, hey, this is, a you know, the whole Jesus story, the birth of Christ. It's kind of neat. There's some other narratives like that out there. It's really a, a warm story, a, a bedtime story to tell your kids at night, right? But what does it really mean for me? And I, I, have, I have some friends. I have one friend who was a business owner. And he said, you know, I don't want to learn how to do business from a book. I want to learn how to do business from people who are in business. I don't want to be operated on by a surgeon who's read in a book that last week. Oh, let me operate you on you. I want to be operated on by somebody who does surgery. Do you understand what Advent means? Jesus has plunged himself into this world. And he's enmeshed himself in the sin-soaked, stained world. God is not aloof. He's not immune to your problems. But he has come and put himself into this world. The writer of Hebrews tells us that Jesus was like us in every way. Suffered in every way, and yet was without sin. I love what president of Wheaton College and Bible commentator Philip Rankin says. The humility of his birth was the whole pattern of his life. Jesus humbled himself to be a, to the very death. And there are rumors of this already at his birth. The sufferings that commenced with his incarnation culminated with his crucifixion. The same body wrapped in swaddling cloths was also wrapped in a burial shroud. The manger points us to the cross and to the grave. And this is how we are saved by the humility of our Savior. We are saved by believing for sure that Jesus humbled himself and becoming a man and dying on the cross for our sins. Listen, I don't know what you've been, all of you have experienced through the pandemic or what you're going through right now. Maybe you have another health issue or, or some other crisis or a broken relationship in your marriage. And I want you to know that Advent means that God is with you in the midst of that. Tomorrow, when you're opening presents and someone complains about what they got or fights over whatever the food or going on, God is with you. And God is with you in that strained relationship. God is with you in your health crisis. And God is with you in your financial needs. You see, this is the answer to how can a good God allow evil and suffering in the world? How? I'll tell you how, God says. I'm going to send my son to live the life that you and I should live and die the death that you and I should die and rose again. You see, God is not immune to your suffering and pain and anguish, but he plunged himself into this world to rescue you, to rescue me. Emmanuel means that God is with you. But when you experience the incarnation of Christ in your life, when you take it into the center of your life, it transforms you, and you want to incarnate the love of Jesus to others. Now, this might come to a surprise to you as you look at me and you say, he's got a bald head, he's been living for a few years. For me to tell you that I just saw only a couple years ago, It's a Wonderful Life. That great movie of George Bailey, who is a overwhelmed, stressed out salesman who's ready to commit suicide because his life has not turned out the way he intended to be. And he gets visited as he's on the bridge by Clarence, the second great angel, seeking to get his wings. And one of the unique things that Clarence comes up with and how to rescue George Bailey is to take George back in time to show him all the things that, the impact that he's made on people's lives and what his life, what, what Bedford Falls would have liked New York would have looked like 
if George had never been there. And so you go back, and instead of Bedford Falls, it's named Potterville, named after the evil, uh, greedy business person. He shows George that, that the druggist, Mr. Gower, is released from prison for manslaughter because George wasn't there to stin her up, to intervene when he was going to accidentally poison somebody. He's not there. He sees when he's not there that the business and loan business that his dad built up folds because he's not there to carry it on. His Uncle Billy is institutionalized and is probably worst of all, he sees his brother Harry's grave and he sees that soldiers have died because George wasn't there when Harry was a little boy and he fell into the ice, into the water and drowned. And so soldiers died because Harry's not there because George hadn't saved them at a very young age. So what is the point? The advent means that Christ has come and we, Harvest Fellowship, are to incarnate the love of Jesus wherever we live, work, and play. And so what if God were to come along and give us the gift of seeing what Calvert County, what Lusby would look like if Harvest Fellowship never existed? Would lives have been transformed? Would, would people have been touched? How about your family? How about your friends? How about your neighbors if you didn't exist? Do they know the love of Christ incarnated through you? You see, that's what Advent says to you and to me. J.I. Packer highlights this Christmas spirit. He says, the Christmas spirit does not shine out in the Christian snob. For Christmas spirit is the spirit of those who, like their master, live their whole lives on the principle of making themselves poor, spending and being spent to enrich their fellow humans, giving time, trouble, care, and concern to do good to others, and not just to their own friends, in whatever way there seems need. You see, Christmas spirit, Advent, is about God who is with us. And as we are called, as God has sent his son, so God sends us to incarnate his love. That's what Advent means. And you can only do that. You can only love in that way. You can only spend. You can only sacrifice your time, talent, and treasure as you have received the incarnation, the love of God for you in Christ. There was a 12th century theologian named Anselm of Canterbury. And he wrote a book entitled Cordaeus Homo. It's Latin for Why God Became Man. And Anselm got it so right. And I want to close with this. God became man to take the wrath and curse of God for your sin and my sin. That's why God came. That's why God is with us. Jesus appeased the wrath and curse of God, a holy God, by taking God's wrath for us in your place. And if you will receive that, if by faith you rest in that, you will discover richly the beauty of the incarnation and what Christmas is all about. You might be like one of my friends who said, after a while, he, he was saying he was busy coming to church and he wasn't sure what he believed. And then a light went on. God, through the Holy Spirit, awakened his heart and he said, you know what? When I hear the news, the good news of Jesus, it's like I'm being 
woken up for the very first time. Perhaps that's you tonight. May you sing of the joy of the incarnation of Christ for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for dwelling among us. Thank you for sending your son in our place to, to live the life that we should live and die in the death that we should have died. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us in the mess and the crisis. That, Lord, you're with us here tonight, but you will be with us tomorrow. And you will be with us from the week on and into 2021. You will be with us in the midst of a pandemic. You are there. Thank you, God, that you are not socially distant from us, but you draw near through your Son. Father, I pray that you will help us to be a people that incarnates that same love that we receive in Christ. We ask in Jesus' name.
Please stand. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, rest with healing in His wings.
while we will extinguish these lights, may the light of Christ shine forth in you. Receive God's good word, his benediction upon you. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, that your hearts may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ha, ha, ha.